So we're trying to envision the scenario here. So so we're already midgets dressed up like <laughs> like troubadours. How can we make ourselves any weirder? I know. Let's go. <laughs> and speak out of the side of our mouths. <laughs> the people on the Wizard of Oz set are going, okay, whatever. Okay. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and next, we're gonna move our arms in a jerky motion. <laughs> and you wish you would have come up with that. This is 1939. They don't even have like TV or anything. Where are these people getting this stuff? I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Aside from uh, the, the 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 big gigantic bin of peyote. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Giles. Doug Giles. It's only through your show, your Clash Daily, other sources for news. Would you even get that kind of intel? <laughs> we're so we're so bored with the media and how it's just jacking up this presidential race that we're now just resorting to deconstructing the Lollipop Guild and the Wizard of Oz. We just can't handle it anymore. Well, I was there in 2012 when I had my radio show uh, down in Miami, Jamie, and what I did is that I reverted to deconstructing the cow cells song, I Love the Flower Girl. <laughs> Who wants a girl or loves a girl or thinks that the universe brings them a girl whose main attribute is standing out in the middle of a rainstorm? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I know. It's like it's like who is like sitting there watching a snail on a garden gate. It's like you know, Donovan. Uh, it, come on now. No, the, the the Wizard of Oz, man. Again, I didn't know that. Uh, I thought lysergic acid dilithamide uh, came about <laughs> like in the '60s with Timothy Leary, but man, they were munching on <laughs> definite blotter for that film. There's no, there's no question about it. I mean, honestly. So you've got uh, Pussification, which, of course, is an awesome book. I know it's going gangbusters right there on the Amazon, uh, Amazon site still in the gender studies section, which I can't even get over how funny that whole thing is. I know. It's funny. But, um, uh, you know, for, for a current example, Jamie, I don't know if we, you have parents listening. I don't know the demographic makeup of your show, but I'd like to tell parents that if they want their son to be turned into a prancing dandy who despises his masculinity and suppresses the testosterone fog that God and nature hardwired him to dwell in, then you know what, parent? You should send your kid to Duke University. Check this out, Jamie. The Duke's Men's Project which should be named the Duke Make Men Prince and Dandy Project, launched this month, and guess who's hosting it, Jamie, and what the topic is. The Women's Club is hosting it on campus, and the topic is how to rid your son of this thing called toxic masculinity. Oh, wow. And that's at Duke University. I guess they're still smarting from the fake rape claim down there and right. they're still punished right. they're still punishing themselves for something that didn't happen yeah and what could go wrong man if you got the women's center uh <laughs> that's that's hosting an event on a toxic masculinity it's a 10-week uh, uh festival fueled by man hatred for male identified students so that they'll be shamed away from supposed male privileges patriarchy and the language of dominance. In other words, they're going to be re-educated to become little pinker pots who have a male appendage, just the kind of fair cupcakes uh, Hillary, Marley Feminist, Radical Islam would love for to morph into because you know what, Jamie? Males who are feminized, they're easy to control. That's if they still have a male appendage by the 10th workshop because something tells me the 10th workshop will be when the surgery is performed. <laughs> Listen to what this uh, numbnuts named uh, Diprobomic, which is an apropos name if I've ever heard one for uh, leading this event. He said, we're here to critique and analyze our masculinity and to toxic masculinities to create health <laughs> healthier one. Another junior named Alex Bressler, he said, the program 
is going to help men proactively just deconstruct masculinity. This rank experiment, man, is an effeminization. It's patterned off a goofy idea via the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill where the poor dukes, you ought to see this video, man, <laughs> were shamed into contemplating how masculinity has played a harmful influence in their lives. You know what? If it weren't for dudes, if it weren't for masculine uh, men, they wouldn't have that stupid university, by the way, that's named after uh, Duke. I guess they should rename it, Jamie, to Duchess. <laughs> we wouldn't even have this country to have these banal arguments if it weren't for some badass cats from England that were sick of taking orders from some snaggletooth king. Dudes did that. Not saying that the women uh, didn't, but by and large, Men set up this bad boy for them to have their stupid, little, lame, dandy uh, discussions in a 10-week seminar. Yeah, and you know, here's the thing. What's, what's even worse about all this is they were able to... They, the, the parents are paying 60 grand a year for this. So it's like, what a scam job that is, right? Or I yeah. don't know how much tuition no, is. But. I'll sell them my book for 15 bucks, <laughs> and if, they, if their kid reads and obeys my book, Pussification, uh, he's going to be all right. But 60 grand, Jamie, can you imagine? You work your butt off, you save, you do all the stuff, you got hopes and dreams for your kid, you, they're the apple of your eye, and then you send them some crap house like this. And they come back uh, looking like Boy George. That would be crazy. But apparently this is an epidemic because did you see the story about, I mean, this is in Alabama. The University of Alabama students, 30 of them, staging an anti-American protest by say, staying seated during the national anthem when the Crimson Tide played Kentucky. It's unbelievable. This is in, this is in Alabama. Well, I, I, live, uh, I live outside of uh, Austin. And I mean, this is cowboy country, man. Beautiful gateway to the hill country in Dripping Springs, Texas. And you can't get more cowboy, more country uh, than Dripping Springs, Texas, man. And you know what they, uh, what's being railroaded through their school system? Transgender toilets. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, they're going to kick this thing, you know, uh, all the way downfield. It's not even, <laughs> it ain't going to get the time of day here in Dripping Springs, man. And uh, sure enough, boom, it looks like they're going to get their transgender toilets. I don't know anybody in Dripping Springs who would admit that they're, tra <laughs> they're transgendered, much less uh, scream for a toilet. That might, I guess it's going to be for the, the, the tranny that comes along 20 years from now because, man, I don't know if I've uh, missed my neighbors, but... These are cowboys, dude. <laughs> this That's is not broke back mountain. Wow. And nobody's uh, augering for a, a transgender toilet. But they're on the rampage, man. Liberals are taking over. That is crazy. Dripping uh, Springs, Texas, huh? Sounds like a great place. Oh, it is. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, I mean, it's gorgeous. Gateway to the hill country. And, uh, again, cowboy, Texas, boots, 30-30. You know, chewing tobacco, and it's like, can we have a transgender toilet? I I can't believe they didn't get laughed out of the place. Right. Yeah. Now the book is called Pussification: The Effeminization of the American Male. It's right there on Amazon. You got to check it out. And also, don't make sure you also check out the song. And it's 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 a good one. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be no. So you, yeah, you don't let your cowboys grow up to be blanks. So there you go. I love it, man. All right, so listen, I don't know whether we're going to pull this late October thing off just because of just some issues, but uh, we got we'll get it done, okay? We're going to find we're going to find a way to make it happen at some point during the year, okay? I'm getting no love from you guys, man. Well, listen. The nation hates me. <laughs> People are complaining. Dude, no listen, let me tell you something. You are like one of the favored segments of the week, I'm telling you. And, and my audience, and Katie, I know you asked like about the makeup of my audience. We, My audience made up of, yes, parents, people who are raising kids, who uh, love your books, uh, especially with the on the girls. I have a few people who already bought that book. I got people, I know your website's being just blown up by my people and everybody here uh, works their butts off and, and listen to the show a lot of them are union guys a lot of them are business guys uh, and gals and people just to basically get their hands dirty and are in the arena as Teddy Roosevelt would say and so yeah they're, they're completely right in your wheelhouse <laughs> well I, I love them and I would love uh, Jamie to come there I'll bring safari cigars 
we'll find some place where nobody will bother us, a safe, a safe space, uh, Jamie, where, where we can talk about our founding docks, where we can talk about kicking our enemies' backside. We can talk about, uh, you know, resurrecting this nation to be a great experiment in self-governance. We'll find a little safe space, but they got to have alcohol. And they gotta, <laughs> they got to allow us to smoke cigars. Because if I, my memory serves me correctly, uh, Jamie, uh, my prevagen's not kicking in yet this morning. I believe that America started in this place called churches and bars. And if we get, if we can get that kind of vibe going, then uh, we could, we could save this place. I got just the place. Of course. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, they've got a patio out there, and you can smoke cigars and do whatever you want out there. So we'll we'll find and see if we can get a venue there. Hey, at Doug underscore Giles, and uh, let's see, ClashDaily.com. Can you hold on one second, buddy? Here, here, let me, let me get proof in the pudding sure. here. Eric, you are on with the great Doug Giles. What's up, brother? Doug Giles, thank you. It's a great – my name's Eric, and thank you. Um, but I, I always love – when you talk, uh, because he makes sense. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, did Jamie pay you, Eric, to no, uh, come on and say that, man? Eric, did he, tell you I, I, did he tell you I was feeling blue and I needed some encouragement? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, I just didn't know what else to say. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he, he probably didn't expect to be on with you. And uh, again, Doug, no. So there's, there's nothing... Uh, we're we're I, all in. I love it, man. You got a rowdy crowd. Uh, I hear from them uh, via Facebook and, and Twitter, and and uh, they're not sending me checks yet, but uh, I still love them. <laughs> all right, buddy. Listen at Doug underscore Giles Clash Daily dot com. We'll see you, bro. Take care, Thanks, Jamie. All right.